Your work has probably touched many lives. What um, Do you have any pregnant stories that uh, people might have told you once they found out who their ancestors are? Well, it, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of stories. The, the great thing about this is that every African-American and their family, they, they have a story. There's so many stories that have been untold in African-American communities all over the United States, be it in Louisiana or um, West Virginia, uh, the Chesapeake Bay area, or in Florida in the Seminole area, you know, where the Seminoles were. There are so many stories where the African experience was one of, 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 of combating uh, being marginalized and stereotyped and, 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 and the issues of dealing, fighting back on, you know, the racism and all of that. And so in, 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 in that, those stories, in those stories, there is this shaping of an image of a people, mm -hmm. of a family, of families and of individuals. And a lot of times uh, those stories are, are relived when people do this DNA testing. They say, wow, I knew that I had an aunt on my, uh, I had an aunt, uh, my aunt on my mother's side um, was telling me these stories about uh, their grandmother being a Cherokee uh, Indian. And um, so then when they, you know, they do the test, they find that they do have Native American ancestry. Nobody believed them, but here, lo and behold, they find this. And so they, you know, they then want to go and learn more about their, uh, their uh, ancestry. Um, I, you know, I hear stories all the time about people who, you know, say, well, there was a certain family member who spoke, a, uh, who, who had this vocabulary that was quite different from other people, and we were able to trace it to um, some of these words to Sierra Leone, and then when we do the DNA test, we find that we have Sierra Leone lineages, uh, uh, ancestry in our family. So we hear those stories a lot, too. Names that are retained, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's what's fascinating, because given what the history of the transatlantic slave trade and how the, the, the culture and traditions were lost. There are still these little tidbits mm -hmm. of, of culture that have been retained through generations. And uh, this is one way that, um, that, I'm, uh, that I see people sort of reliving these stories and, and, and building upon those, those little tidbits. What happens when people have unexpected outcomes? For example, if they find out their ancestor was a former slave owner, mm -hmm. for example, and what, what happens what kind of reactions yeah. do you get? Well, well, reactions vary. I mean, they, they could be good and negative mm -hmm. uh, sort, sort of reactions. The public response, what we're finding, is, are due to two things. The, the, the individual's expectations and their motivations for, for being tested. So if you have high expectations or, or if, you, if, if you're motivated because of a history in your family of people saying that you're Mandinka or your family's Mandinka, you, your motivation is a, a bit different than somebody who wants this test just to, for recreational purposes. So the response is really due to those two, you know, expectations and motivations. Uh, in some cases, people get uh, uh, pretty um, emotional, you know, this emotional and high anxiety because they feel they have to reconcile the genetic information with the, 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 the you know, the, the family history information. And uh, in some cases, it's easy to do that. In others, it's not. Uh, and remember, these are just one particular, these tests represent one lineage. And so the more tests you do, the more lineages that you can find. And in some cases, yes. the other lineages can help, may confirm these oral histories in your family. Can this DNA information help be helpful in other ways, for example, with health issues mm -hmm. and uh, diseases and all of those kinds of things? In yeah, I, I, think, I think ultimately, um, we will learn uh, more about um, family history and how family history and, and ancestry impact health, okay? Um, but one of the things I wanted to do when we first started doing this was to separate that because of the stigma in the black community as it relates to research, biomedical research. You know, I didn't want to... Why is that? Well, there, well, there hasn't been this a strong level of trust built uh, between the, um, the scientific community, which is mainly, you know, of, of white ancestry and, uh, you know, let's say the federal government mm -hmm. and, and African-American community. Tuskegee. You think about Tuskegee, example, that, yeah. it's a cl classic mm -hmm. example. Right. And so I didn't want there to be any sort of confusion in terms of why this was occurring, why this testing was being done. And, and, and while there are certain um, uh, approaches that we could use to look at health with the DNA, 
we decided not to do that at, you know, in the beginning because we wanted to, you know, because one of the things I did was I asked people, I said, do you think DNA is, is, is reliable or empirical? And most African Americans said, yes, they believe it is a useful um, tool. And I said, well, okay, well, what would you like to do if, if, if given access to the technology, what would be one of the first things you want answered? Would it be understanding your health or would it be uh, ancestry? And by and large, people said they wanted to know more about their ancestry. I think that's because of that, you know, in our psyche as a community, we have these voids, these missing pieces to the puzzle. And this is helping to resolve that. Uh, and of course, we're interested in our health. Of course, we want to utilize this technology and engage the scientific community in a way that we could benefit from this technology. Right now, I think for many of the early adapters of this technology, they want to know about their ancestry. Mm -hmm. What kind of reaction or response are you getting from Africans, from folks who live there, yeah. about this kind of DNA testing? They're very excited about it. In fact, uh, I talked to different um, uh, African uh, 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 um, diplomats, and they are being bombarded here in the U.S. They're being bombarded by people, African Americans who've been tested, and connect with one of their countries, uh, you know, due to the genetic ancestry. They then want to get um, citizenship, dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, there's a lot of African Americans now lobbying for dual citizenship with Cameroon or Nigeria or Sierra Leone. And so, th and so th what's emerging is that there's dialogue, increased dialogue. And that's exactly what I wanted. Because for so long in the African American population, we did not look back at Africa, at West Africa in particular, Western Central Africa, as our um, cousins. Uh, you know, this is where we came from. Mm -hmm. You know, we sort of ignore that area. And so what I wanted to do was increase dialogue between African Americans and West Africans. And this is, this is a, a great way to do that because people, when they get to the test, they want to go back to Africa. They want to, you know, uh, uh, instead of going to um, uh, France or Europe on vacation, they want to go to Senegal. They want to go to Dakar. They want to go to, to Yoanda, Cameroon because they have a connection there now and they have a reason to go to those areas. And uh, uh, you, you think about the youth though. I mean, how, how often do you hear young African-Americans uh, talking about Africa in a positive light? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they sit around saying, well, I'm not African, you know, because in, in, in schools, what are they taught about their history? They're taught about here in the United States, the history starts with slavery. And I think that's sad. I think, you know, they should be taught that they come from a particular area of the country that, I mean, of the world that, that had a um, um, very rich culture, rich history. And um, uh, due to the history of the transatlantic slave trade, they were brought here. And so we didn't, our history doesn't start with slavery. We came through slavery. It didn't start with slavery. But so many youth don't understand so that. So do you have any programs that reach out to young people yeah. to help them to yeah. understand so, so, their ancestry? Well, yeah. So, so I, I go out and speak to the youth all the time. I think they're the ones really that are going to help shape What's this, the response? this, they this, get this reconciliation this? that's occurring. Uh, they, they get excited. Yeah. It, in, in some cases, I mean, I have to, you know, initially they have that wall up because they say, I don't want to know anything about Africans. They're a bunch of booty scratchers. I mean, you know, I mean, this, you hear that, you know, that, 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 Im that image that they have of them is, is, is negative. And when they start understanding the history and the experience and then look at the DNA information, then they see that they're just like these guys. And they then become aware and concerned about what's happening there now. So ultimately, I think what's gonna happen is more African Americans are gonna start lobbying for different African communities like for instance things that were occurring in Liberia and Sierra Leone you know the the the, um, the violence and, and and all of that I mean we should be alarmed because those you know that's where we come from and so I think that's going to increase now because of this awareness and dialogue between the, uh, the the different communities what you do could be overwhelming to most people what is it that keeps you enthused and excited and energetic about what when, you do when I see a smile like that <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> I mean I mean I, I just I, I feel that that very most often um, scientists you know in particular geneticists their our work doesn't reach the community doesn't reach the average person I mean we sit around we're lab rats we sit at the mm -hmm. bench and you know we do experiments 
And so here I'm involved in a project that I get so excited about and I see it disseminate from the lab to the community. And it's, it's one of those projects that is rare. It's, it's a rare, it's rarity in science.